I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing and welcome to episode 124 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. This week we have something kind of cool to show you, something from our good friend Andrew Hutchings, who you see right here, uh, also known as Linux Jedi. Now he did the really, really, really cool RGB to HDMI interface for the um, Amiga 1000 that I did in this video right here. Just absolutely loved it. The stuff that that um, Andrew designs is all really, really well designed, really well constructed, and really well implemented. So thumbs up to the quality of his work. Here's a link to his website where you can see a lot of his stuff there and and order it. Uh, now he doesn't always have stuff in stock. Some of it you just order the parts and you build it yourself. Now me, I'm not that kind of guy. I, you guys know that. So I wait until he builds a dozen or so of them and I just buy them right off the shelf. Today what we're talking about is his Ramses chip RAM expansion for the Amiga 500, not the 500 plus, that can already handle the big Agnes. So the Amiga 500, CDTV, and Amiga 2000 series computers. This is going to replace your existing Agnes in there, either your 512 or your one megabyte Agnes, and it's going to put a two megabyte Agnes in there, which you supply yourself. And it has the RAM built right into the main board. Let's take a look. Here's the handsome little board right here. This is the actual Ramses board right here. On this side, you see we have some uh, logic chips and some, some little brain chips that are so hard to find nowadays, which is why uh, these aren't always readily available. Here we've got two megabytes of, uh, of the actual chip RAM right there. We've got some icons, which we have some jumpers. This one is a RAM toggle jumper that will toggle it between two megabyte of chip RAM or one megabyte of chip RAM and 512 kilobytes of, of slow fast RAM for compatibility with some older games. Now you flip this little guy over. <clears throat> this is where this plugs right into your existing Agnes socket. Here is where you put in your 8375 Agnes chip. Now you have to use an 8375 or it simply won't work. If you have the VBB version of Agnes, which will be printed right on the chip, you hit this little jumper and you plug it in, and that works with the VBB chips. If you don't have a VBB Agnes, just leave this uh, little jumper here open. Now this little cable, this is where the magic comes in. This is a Gary socket interface. Now in the past, if you wanted to use one megabyte or two megabytes of chip RAM on your Amiga 500, unless it shipped with it, you had to cut some traces and uh, fiddle with a little uh, jumper pad and solder a little jumper pad. I've done some videos on that before. What this does is this plugs into your Gary chip. Your Gary just clips right on here and this goes right onto the motherboard where the Gary chip was. This intercepts the signals and sends them back to the Ramsey's board so it works properly without one bit of cutting or soldering on your board. Now here, I have an 8375 Agnes that I've had in this anti-static bag for probably 16, 17 years now. Never been opened even one time. I'm just making the assumption that it works. So we're going to take this 8375 Agnes, plug it into the socket here, take out the Gary chip, plug it in here, and then plug this, li this little guy into the Agnes socket, and in theory, we'll have two megabytes of chip RAM on our lovely machine. So this is the machine it's going into. This is the Amiga 500 that I bought a few months ago. You'll see a link right up there uh, with that video. It's a, it's a really nice Amiga 500 Rev 5 motherboard. It had a 512K Agnes in it. I had since replaced it with a 1 meg Agnes. You see right there with that little heat sink on there. And then through the magic of yens from individual computers, ACA 500, this can automatically map the one megabyte chip RAM without having to 
cut any jumpers or, or jump any traces or anything like that in the board. It's just a little magic trick that this provides. That Agnes is going to be replaced with the 8375 Agnes. Let's go ahead and pop her out, take a look. Now, with our 8375 Agnes chip here, you will notice that one edge is notched right there. You see the little notched edge? That will match with a notched edge on the Ramses interface. So you really only have one way you can put it in. Please don't try and force it in the wrong way. That would be bad. So we're going to just put this little guy in here. Now be aware, the old Agnes chips will fit in here, but don't do that. That would be just silly. That's not gonna work properly. Properly, Only put the 8375 Agnes in. Don't try and put in an 8370, 71, or 8372 Agnes. They're not gonna do anything with this particular doodad here. Now, on the motherboard, you've got your fat, Ag fat Agnes right here that we wanna remove. Now, there are a couple ways to do that. If you can prevent it, do not use the pry it out with a screwdriver method because there's a reasonable chance you're gonna break these 35 year old sockets or 30 year old sockets right here. So use the proper tool for chip extraction. There's some of them that uh, you just clamp down and squeeze them and pull them up. I happen to have a little different tool that I use to extract mine. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my Agnes chip and then pull out my Gary chip and then we'll get them reseated. So we've safely removed both Agnes and the Gary chip. On the Gary interface, you'll notice there's a little notch right here on the side. If we're reading it, it says Gary. Follow the same notch right here. We've got the notch in the chip, and we'll just carefully put Gary right in there. Come on, Gary. Yippee skippy. Gary pops right in. Take off the little protective coating. So you need to be careful because there are a couple different versions of the Amiga 500 motherboard. Some of them you're going to have the Fat Agnes with pin one, which is the little notch right there, right down here. And others, I think some of the later revisions, pin one is actually over here. But be careful because the instructions show that you'd put our little device on this way, but that's only for some versions. You have to match up pin one. In my case, the device has to go this way. The Ramsey's board has to go this way because that's the little flat end of the device and it has to match up with the little flat end right here. Now this video was delayed by a month. See this little ceramic cap right here? It's very important. That brings some very important voltage down to the Agnes chip and it picks up clock signals from there. Well, last month when I was originally doing this video, I was moving things around in the board, getting things positioned, and I just put just the tiniest, tiniest bit of pressure down here as I was moving some things around, and this entire ceramic cap broke into three separate pieces, just popped. Like, what the heck? It wasn't powered on or anything. So I had to wait to get some more of these little ceramic caps in, which are the same as the ones over here. These, I uh, hope those don't break. Um, but I ordered a couple of those and they're like 30 cents a piece. They just took a while to get in to get the motherboard working again. <clears throat> so just be very observant as to which version of the motherboard you have. Uh, I believe it's Rev 3 boards all go on this way. Rev 5 boards, uh, most of them go on this way, although you may find some that go on this direction. Just look for the number one and follow the little flat area of the Agnes chip and just make sure they're matched up and you'll be just fine. Now let's get this little beauty powered up. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using my ACA 500 plus in here, uh, just for convenience, so I have a nice hard drive to boot from. I'm going to take a look at my standard configuration here. This is going to be loading the Kickstart 3.2.1 ROM and booting up Kickstart 3.2.1.
and looky what we have at the top of the screen. Now that we have this beautiful Ramsey's card in here. Look at that, two megabytes of graphics memory. That is sweet. All by putting in Linux Jedi's nice little board right there and the Gary mod right there. Everything will recognize the two megabytes of chip RAM just fine. So we'll open up a show config. Uh, this is the new uh, two megabyte or the Amiga OS 3.2 version. There we are, two megabyte of chip memory and about seven megabytes of fast memory. Pretty sweet. Let's see if that memory actually performs any better than regular chip RAM. Um, we're going to go into our utils and we're going to take a look at sysinfo here. All right, let's do a speed test. And you see it uh, recognizes everything just fine. It's going to recognize it. Uh, let's see. Uh, yep, ECS Agnes, 2 meg. ECS Denise, uh, CPU speed is 21 megahertz because of my ACA 500 plus. Um, chip speed, 1.12 times faster than Amiga 600. But uh, take a look at this here with the ACA 500 plus. It does some things faster than an Amiga 1200 without any fast RAM expansion. You put fast RAM in an Amiga 1200, it's gonna be up, up about here. It's the faster CPU and the fact that this has fast RAM on it that makes it look so much faster. We can look at our memory, 6.8 megs of, of fast, 512 of slow, two megabytes of chip RAM, exactly what we would expect. So now for about 100 pounds, we have an absolutely awesome way of adding two megabytes of chip RAM to your Amiga 500, your Amiga 1 or 2000, and your CD TV. Absolutely beautiful. Just remember, you're going to have to provide your own Agnes chip. They often have some for sale on eBay. Look around long enough and you will find a two meg Agnes chip that'll work. Um, I have like one spare that I keep just in case one of mine dies. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I had one sealed in a package for 17 years. I never opened, never knew if it works. Works perfect. The fact that you no longer need to use your trapdoor memory is great. All the chip RAM comes right on the device, right on the Ramsey's board but your real-time clock in your f memory bay, your bottom slot memory bay, continues to work just fine. We don't have any issues with that. Now, this is a Rev1 board that I was showing you today. Now, Andrew has told me, and he's released on Twitter, that he's now shipping the Rev2 Ramsey's boards. Now, the difference between them is the, the Rev2 uses a little different control chip, one that is commonly available now, where the chip that he used on here is just almost impossible to find. Functionally, he says they are identical. There's no performance difference. There's no configuration difference. They work the same, just a different chip, same price. You'll know you have a Rev2 board because it will be purple instead of the nice black color that this is. But if you happen to have a Rev1 board, they work fine, they work perfect. I've had nothing but beautiful luck with mine. Once you start to use two megabytes of chip RAM, on one of your ECS Amigas, you will find it difficult to go back. The, the, the fact that you can multitask so many more programs with two megabytes of chip RAM is just fantastic. Access to some of the expanded uh, uh, color modes, like using a higher uh, color workbench screen, all of a sudden it's not sucking up a bunch of your chip RAM. You still have 1.7, 1.8 megs of chip RAM left, even on a 16 color screen. Absolutely beautiful. I recommend this upgrade to everybody who needs two megabytes of chip RAM on their original ECS machine. Huge thanks to my wonderful patrons who are so supportive of me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to join in the Patreon fun, pop on over to patreon.com forward slash 10 mark. And for as little as $2 a month, you can join this illustrious list that just happens to be going over the announcement for the Amiga Art Contest, which 
I encourage all of you to join. Take a look at the link in the description for information on the Amiga Art Contest 2022. So thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Um, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, uh, wherever you can find me there. I'm, I'm all over the place. Please support our local hardware manufacturers for modern Amiga hardware. These guys work hard. They do a great job. Pop on over to their stores and buy these awesome products so they can continue to develop things for the Amiga community. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, off to play with my Amiga 500.